John here guys and today we're talking about the Crux 3. The Crux 3, how do they come up with the names of these things over at Happy Model? <laughs> what kind of stupid name is that? I'm not really sure but this is the latest ultralight um, 3 inch to come out and man you know I really love this formula. It's been a while since we've seen a good one of these and this really comes in at sort of a midpoint between a lot of the very popular things that have been out and it gives you a lot of versatility for an extremely light weight. This thing as it sits with the Crossfire receiver and this Mini Immortal T comes in at only 43 grams. So incredibly light and if you combine it with a little 2S, uh, this is a Tattoo 450 milliamp 2S pack, um, it's only like 70 something grams. So light and so at first glance i would think like okay this is kind of a lighter version of the Dytone cube 339 but no that's actually more that's heavier without a battery than this thing is with a battery that's how light this thing is now this does use a slightly smaller motor it's a 1202.5 6400 kv that's meant to be run on 2s you can actually run it on 1s too but like i'm not bothering that 2s is the way that i would go with this thing it has the crazy bf4x board this is that one that's like totally all inclusive it has your video transmitter built in and a camera plug it has the motor plug so there's essentially no soldering for this build if you use the built-in spi receiver but i don't recommend that you do that those receivers are garbage i don't think they should even be using them for anything that's going to fly outside it just doesn't have the range if you're using it for a whoop board that's going to go inside that's probably fine but for anything outside you need crossfire so i got the crossfire version now one thing i don't like is they just like taped an immortal l antenna to the arm it was gonna immediately get chopped up in the props if i tried to fly it like that so i happen to have a few of these mini immortal t's i went ahead and installed that it was kind of a pain to get to but at least the receiver is somewhat accessible at the bottom here um, rounding out the build in addition to the crossfire receiver it does have this caddix ant camera i'm going to talk a little bit more about that it's actually really really good look at the shape of this canopy design it's super super light um, but like i said the antenna mounting for this crossfire receiver was absolute garbage unflyable if i didn't have this i'm not really sure how i would have mounted they gave you one antenna tube for that immortal l that's kind of a shape like this so i don't know what you were supposed to do with that anyway i don't love that they don't give you a strap they just give you some included rubber bands and they're not even like the good rubber bands i'm talking about if you're gonna give me rubber bands give me the kind that you get you know from some asparagus you know and it makes your pee smell funny give me the good rubber bands not these are like the ones you would find in the office cabinet at work they aren't worth using for anything. I mean, so far it hasn't broken yet, but I want some of the beefier asparagus ones. Come on. You can see it's not super rigid. It does have a little bit of flex, but it's so light that I don't think you're really gonna be banging it and breaking it that much. The replacement bottom plates for this are probably super cheap anyway. It does come with the very nice um, sort of carbon fiber look, happy model case inside there you get some spare props plenty of extra screws some zip ties an extra um thing of this little gooey stuff i'm not really sure what that's for and you get a holder for the insta 360 go uh, which i sold and i kind of wish i still had it uh, just for that you also get the camera controller for the caddx camera some really nice instructions on how to bind anything up and some cool Happy Model stickers. I think this is a Mobula tube. I'm not sure why they don't have a Crux sticker, but oh well, you get a Mobula sticker. So now we want to the components. How does it fly? Uh, it flies really, really great. These Gemfan Byblade 3018 props uh, really give you something that can spin up quickly with the smaller size motor and with the light weight, it is a match made in heaven. You know, sometimes on these super, super ultralight toothpicks, you get a really, really floaty feel, but this has the perfect combination of power and a light weight that you do have enough power to make it super fun to do punches to get really close proximity to get really nice control but it's not ultra floaty 
which means that it almost flies kind of like a five inch racing quad, you know, still light, still lighter than a, than a freestyle quad, but you can actually drop in a predictable way. The way that it handles is kind of like one of my racing quads. The rates and pits that they have set up all default are actually pretty good. They're kind of on the slower end, so I don't know if they expect you to try to race this thing or if they're just trying to tune everything down so it's not super twitchy. It feels just like how I like my racing quads to feel, which is awesome. Uh, probably similar to like a Betaflight default on 4.2. I'm not sure which uh, firmware I put on this. I will um, put it in this screen. I just set the switches and fly as it is because I want to show how it is. The tune on this is actually really good. It flies exceptionally well. Is it as fast as something like this? This three inch also on by blades 339. Uh, and no, it's not. It's not as fast. This is a little bit faster on the top end, but in the slower speeds, they actually fly pretty similar. And because of the lighter weight, um, and it's a little bit quieter. So really this kind of feels kind of like the super ultra light weight of the Diatone 229, but with a little bit more power, a little bit more control. I really like this formula. And this Caddx Ant camera is exceptional. Um, the camera on this really looks great for an analog camera. You can actually see a little bit of detail in there to avoid some of those ghost branches because on this size, you really are going to want to get really close to stuff and do some awesome trick flying. I love this size and form factor. So if I was going to go to a park, um, this is a little bit lighter and you're not going to be going top speed. So I might actually pick this over my beloved Q339 just because it's quieter. The batteries are cheaper. Everything's lighter. You're less likely to smash something. Um, now, if you did want to take it on a track, yes, this for sure. It's faster. It's beefier. It's going to survive crashes more. But if you're not going to be crashing and smashing, do this. You know, one thing that you probably could compare it to the TP3. Here's a toothpick three that I am reviewing right now. It's going to come out very soon. This is very close in how these fly. This flies exceptionally well. This is a little bit more power on this toothpick three because it has some great AMAX motors. But the thing is, once you add in the premium VTX, um, the premium receiver, everything in here, this costs closer to $200. You can get this with the built-in receiver for like 85, 95 bucks, you know, add a crossfire for an extra 20 bucks and then boom, you're off to go. So this is like half the price. So although this does have a little bit more performance, this flies so well. I mean, goodness, the one downside is it's like a little tiny piece of copper that's your antenna here for your video. That is kind of garbage. Um, so your video range is not like super awesome. That's probably my biggest complaint because it does fly so well because it does have crossfire. I can go far. I wish I had a little bit better antenna on the video side, but other than that, this is outstanding. It does do 200 milliwatts. Um, so you're going to get at least a medium amount of range on this. I was flying this the entire time and all this footage from my car. So if I would have been sitting outside, you can factor in. I probably would have gotten at least another 30% of range. I think this is the one to buy. If you want a lightweight park flyer, driveway flyer, backyard flyer, you can't build something that flies like this for this price. Uh, or anywhere close to it. So I do suggest that if you get the Crossfire version, go ahead and throw your own antenna on here. Mini Mortal T is what I would use. They're only like three or four bucks. I already had a few, so that was easy. Um, a few little gripes on this one, but for the price, well under a hundred bucks with the built-in receiver. You know, can you really complain that much? I mean, happy model. It's just getting better and better. This is the new low-cost leader, so not bad. Thanks, guys. <laughs>